So we're going to go ahead right now and we're going to we're going to open up in a word of prayer and then we're just going to dive right into uh, the scriptures and um, we're going to hear from the Lord. Amen. All right. You can bow and go before the Lord with me. Father God, we thank you so much uh, for all that you're doing. We thank you for this time, Lord, of community, um, for fellowship, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for, uh, most importantly for who you are um, to us. I ask and pray, Lord God, that you would bless the hearers of your word. Father God, may we open our, our hearts and ears to hear and receive what you have for us. Uh, may, we, may we be present in this moment, Lord God, um, not distracted by uh, TV or anything in this moment, Lord God. Let us give your undivided attention. Let us uh, choose to sit at your feet. Let us choose, Father God, to um, learn and, and to absorb what you have for us. I ask and pray, Lord, that you will forgive us for our sins that we've committed in this day, Lord God. Let us. Uh, just again, be present with you um, in this moment, and we thank you for all that you're doing. And it's in your blessing, Holy Son Jesus Christ's name. We pray. Amen. All right. Uh, again, we're going to be reading out of uh, the book of John, the Gospels, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, then John. Um, we're going to read chapter three in John. We're going to read the entire chapter. So uh, bear with me um, as we read. Um, and um, let's, let's get at this, go for it. Chapter three reads, there was a man of a, uh, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it, where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it is coming from and where it is going. So is everyone who was born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and you do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen and you do not receive our witness. I have told you earthly things and you do not believe. How can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. That is the son of man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love the darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practice evil, hates the light and does not come to the light, lest the deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light 
that his deeds may be clearly seen that he that they have been done in God, that his deeds have been done in God. It is so much to unpack here. I know we're, we're so used to, uh, you know, John 316, you know, and we get stuck on that, you know, for the God, for for God so loved the world that he that he he gave. He sent his only begotten son. We, we get so stuck on that and we forget that there is so much uh, rich uh, food for us to nourish on um, in in chapter three. First, we're going to go back to the to the beginning. And here you had, you know, Nicodemus, this this Pharisee and Pharisees were um, they were like, you know, considered the most educated at that time um, in the law. Um, they held themselves to a higher standard than everyone else. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, they didn't these these individuals, they spoke the law, but did not live it. And. To the, to the standard in which they held other people uh, to the law. So, you know, here you had, you know, Nicodemus, you know, who was, you know, this Pharisee that did not understand what Jesus was speaking to him uh, at the time about being born again. And I think back earlier in the, in, in, in the scriptures uh, of, you know, Matthew, Mark and Luke, where, you know, where John would, would, would speak and he would say, you know, I baptize with water, but the one after me that's coming after me, and he baptized with fire, with that spirit. And here, you know, Jesus is, is, is giving us this clear reminder of how important it is for us to be both right, baptized by water and by his spirit. He says, no one will enter into the kingdom of heaven um, without it. So what does it mean? What does it mean to be born, to be born of a second time? And this has to this this has to do with our decision and the walk that we proclaim and that we set out to live daily in him. And and the as evidence to my decision, all right, one of the evidence uh, is me being baptized by water. That is an outward expression to those around me and say, look, I am, I am giving myself, that I am choosing to do the sacrificial practice of dying to my flesh, all right, symbolism of Going under the water is being is is being buried is being buried with with the Lord, right? And the coming up is 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 being raised in Christ, right? So so it's the it's the the, the symbolic um, visual uh, for others to see that that this is the choice, this is the the decision that we have made, right? That's that's the first thing, right? The second is is being born of the Spirit. Receiving the Holy Spirit into our lives. Now, I, I, I for one, I remember my earlier years like this, it was this was puzzling to me, kind of like a Nicodemus. Like, well, how can I, I, you know, I understand the baptism by water, but receiving God's Spirit and living in Him. This is the the denouncing of self. This is where we, we come to the understanding that it is not my life is not my own and I need I need a guide. I need a guide in, in life for my life. And the Holy Spirit becomes that compass, our spiritual compass in life, leading us to God's truth. Um, navigating us through life through the lens of how God would desire for us to live. Now we have to accept it and choose to live and walk and talk and be in it. But this is what it means to be born again. Right? That, that the life that I was living previous to receiving Christ was one where, where 
I was living a life full of destruction and death. And if I want to have eternal life instead of eternal death, that it is important for me to be born again. I got to die to that stuff. That stuff got to go. I got to die to it. When I was, you know, running in the neighborhood and, and out here in Carson and, and, and doing all the different things that I was doing. Right. I was leading. My life was 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 being rolled out to eternal death because of the things that I was doing, because I was living by the flesh. I was living in the flesh and I was living by the flesh. And and it's important to 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 understand that that living in the flesh, the flesh only want to satisfy the flesh. The flesh is not concerned with with satisfying the spirit. The flesh is never satisfied. It is never full. It is always consuming, always hungry, always wanting, always seeking, always devouring things that pleases itself. And in order for us to not be in the flesh, we have to kill it and choose to be born again. So this is the process that is that is taking place here, which Jesus is describing to Nicodemus. And I love in, in verse five where he says, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, that he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And this is where our understanding has to match. We have to be on the same page, where we have to be real with ourselves and not... Um, Act as if we can't understand this. And, 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 and then later, I love how Jesus put it to him. He said, look, I'm explaining earthly things to you and you don't understand. So how are you going to understand these spiritual things? And I'm reminded, you know, when Paul says, you know, do not speak spiritual things to those that are not spiritual. And I love how, as we even look through the construction of the Gospels and how Jesus, when he spoke to people, he spoke to them in the language in which they spoke, the earthly language. When he called the fishermen, he spoke to them about fishing. When he talked to farmers, he talked to them about farming. When he talked to tax collectors and those that dealt with finances. He talked to them about money. And he didn't speak spiritual things to them. He wanted to get a clear grasp understanding between the two so they understood clearly what he was saying. Because they understood the language that he was speaking to them. And Paul says to be all things to all men. So all these things align together um, kind of compacting what we're going over here and how Jesus was was talking to Nicodemus and, and, and he referred to him back when he when he was saying, man, I, I talked to you about these things and, and even then you didn't understand when I spoke to you about earthly things. So heavenly things, you're not going to understand. And for me personally, for us, it's important that and we don't think of ourselves too highly than we more highly than we ought to. Right. Um, much like the Pharisees. Right. You know, it's, it's one thing to to, you know, read and memorize a set of scriptures and not live it. And and that that's the issue. A lot of people can can quote scriptures but just because you can quote a scripture, just because you got a scripture tatted on your arm or, or that doesn't mean that you're applying and living that scripture. And it's important that we live the word. That we be living epistles. That we live the word. It has to be alive in us in all that we do. And again, I, I you know, before I get to, you know, the 
the most well-known part of the scripture, it's important that we understand the backdrop before we even get to uh, the God call and response and what he did. And how he laid out to us what must take place on our part before we understand what happened when he sent his son. And I don't want us to lose sight of that. I don't want you to lose sight of that as we read, um, you know, God's word, not just going to the familiar scripture or the coin scriptures. But let's read. And that's why I'm, I'm glad the Lord put on my heart. Let's read this whole chapter. So so that we don't we don't miss all that God has for us and just go to something that that is so well known. All right. I want us to expand um, and, and be ever growing in him. Right. And not just stuck on the scriptures again. Let's not just know a few scriptures. Right. And speak scriptures. Let's live what God is calling for us to do with the word. So as we move over and we go to. Um, and we go to verse. 10, Jesus said. And uh Jesus answered and said to him, are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? I'm going to pause right there. A lot of us who claim to be Christians and, and we're quoting God's word and we are putting demands on people uh, based off of our knowledge of what God's word is. And we're teaching people. But the best teacher is our is our witness and how we live, not what we speak. That's our best teacher. And how we live. Right? How we live. And, and if we want to go off of what is spoken, the Bible reminds us that. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what is what are the things that, that we're putting in us that we allow to come out of us? Like what are what are those things? So our lives are always going to be on display as believers. But I don't want us to ever get so comfortable and in a position to where we are teaching people something that we're not modeling and following and living on a daily basis. You're going to fall. We're going to fall because that is our human nature. But it's not about how many times we fall. It's us getting up and us choosing to walk and define living with God. That I made that decision to walk with him. Not partially, but wholly in him. So I want us uh, to continue to. Uh, to to not be ones who just partially speak his word, but for us to uh, uh, God's word. All right. And then he goes and he says, most assuredly, I say to you. He says, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen. What do you know? What, what are the things that we testify to people? I, and not testify of ourselves, but if, if I'm going to be a believer, if I'm going to be born again, what are the things that I'm living, that I'm showing that I know about who he has called and designed and created me to be? What, what are those things because if the things that, that, that I'm speaking of and I'm testifying of, if it sounds like it's coming from the flesh, even partially, it's not wholly of him. It says, flesh come from flesh. Flesh do fleshly things. Flesh talk about fleshly things. And it says, spirit begat spirit. So it's important that if I'm going to Live in my new nature. If I'm going to live, if I'm going to live in, if I'm going to live in my newness, 
my rebirth. That, sorry, I was just checking. It looked like it went off. Um, if I'm going to live in, in, in my rebirth nature, that it is important that it resembles my source, that it resembles my new, my, my new man, my new one man in him. So I don't want us testifying and speaking and teaching things that are outside of him in a sense of it gives people the wrong impression of who he is because we are his hands and feet. We are his literal expression here on earth. But yet it's confusing because the things that people who say that they're Christian, much like the Pharisees, it does not match up. It does not match up the things that we testify and speak of. That does not show that we are choosing to live and function and be rooted in him. So it's important for us to always take inventory on ourselves and to see who we are today. Like you said, we got to die daily to ourselves, right? We got to, I got to die to me. So every day that I wake up, I got to choose to kill my flesh because my flesh has the ability to be alive if I don't kill it. If I don't check myself then it's going to be a wrap because I allow that thing to breathe and have life because I didn't kill it. So it's important that 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 daily we make the decision to walk with him in the spirit. I want to go down to verse 18. I'm going to skip over 16. We know we know that very well. I think we do. We, we, we know those words that are in that scripture very well. I want to read verse 18 and beyond, and then I'll go back up. It says, he who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. Now, there's a difference between speaking and believing. Okay. There's a difference between speaking and believing. There's a difference between professing. Like I can I can say. But am I showing? Right. And and this is really important. Because it says that the one who believes is not condemned. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Because I'm pressing forward, I'm 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 choosing to kill myself every day. I'm align I'm aligning myself with him and his word. I submit myself to the son. I confess that he is my Lord and my savior. I know that I cannot do this thing called life without him. So I'm going to be glued ears to him, eyes to him, life to him, legs to him to walk in him. That I'm going to choose to be that. And I'm covered. Because I'm walking in him, I'm choosing to be in and of the spirit. But if I'm just talking and there is no mirrored reflection of the life that I am saying by the way that I'm living, it's going to show that I'm still in the flesh, that words, those are just words that I'm allowing to, to come out. But there is no life applied action. There is no connection. And I know for myself, 
And I know for many of us that we don't we don't want to be condemned because we choose not to believe. If I always use this analogy right here when, when it comes to believing. OK, I, again, I played football. Before every game that I played. I believed that we were going to win. I haven't played a down yet. We're out there doing walkthroughs and warmups, right? But I believe that we're going to win. Why? Because of the work that I did previous to align myself with the scouting report that my coaches put forth for me. That I align myself with the word, with the game plan. That I knew that victory was already won. Before we even played a game. And the evidence of that is how I played. The confidence that I played in. And played with. How I assured my teammates. That I wasn't just speaking stuff to them. Without playing to the level that I was speaking. I can't just be rah, rah, rah. But my game is whack, whack, whack. And I'm of no service and no help. So my my how I play was evident of what I believe. And it showed. It was evident. And it's the same with us and our walk. I can't say that I believe verbally and physically there is no evidence of what I'm speaking. Even in those tough moments in games where we, we got a tough opponent. Right? And it's back and forth. But you want to see in the level in which we play and I played and you play and not giving up, not quitting, falling down, getting knocked down, getting back up, staying, sticking to the game plan. Keep listening to the head coach. Keep listening to what God is telling you. Keep trusting in him, staying focused, staying in him, walking in him through it all to the end, knowing that I'm already victorious because I trust and I believe and I live it all the way through to the end. That's how we have to be. That's what this means. About the condemnation. The difference between the one who does not believe in the son and the one who does believe. And, and, and it's important that, that we're on the side of the believers. We don't just speak it, but that we choose to live it. I'm going to read something else to us. I'm going to jump to another scripture uh, that is going to hopefully enhance it a little bit more for you and for us. OK, so if you can, I want you to flip to the book of Galatians. Galatians, uh, we're going to go chapter five and we're going to start right at verse uh, 16. OK, so we're going to go Galatians five. And we're going to start at verse 16 because, again, here it is. We're talking about the difference between living and walking and, and breathing and existing in the flesh and existing and living and breathing and walking and living in, in the spirit. And um, this kind of talks about it a little bit more in depth for us. And then it give us a practical checklist um, that we can go by and kind of show ourselves daily as we do life in him, as we choose to do life in him, that we would cling to this checklist and, and, and continue to work on these things. Right. That would really show that there is no condemnation because we're trying, we're walking, we are living life in him. We are we are giving our best effort moving forward. And it reads as such Galatians 5 starting at verse 16 
It says, I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these two are contrary to one another. So they do not do, uh, excuse me, uh, contrary to one another. So that you do not do the thing that you wish. Pause there. So there is no way, there is no way in this one house, this one body, that I could be walking in the, in the flesh and the spirit together. They're contrary to one another. It's like oil and water. They don't mix. Okay? Either you're doing one or you're doing the other. And that's why it's important from the from the onset of our day for us to denounce the flesh, to kill the flesh, to crucify the flesh. Because if we don't, then we're still living in it because we haven't killed it. We haven't crucified it. We haven't made that decision to walk in the spirit, to confess it. Right. To hold ourselves accountable. So that we can be as successful as possible in this day and doing the thing that we say that we want to do, which is be in him. So, uh, again, there is no way for us to be fleshly and spiritual at the same time. Right. So if it, again, if, if you're partial uh, being in the flesh and how we speak and how we treat one another and how we talk to one another and how, the things that I allow myself to do then it shows that I'm fully in the flesh and I'm not in the spirit. That the things that I speak spiritually are just words that are coming out of my mouth, but the actions that I'm living show that I'm invested in living in the flesh. So it's important for us to make sure that we kill that flesh intentionally, on purpose, from the moment that we wake up. And it says that they're contrary to one another so that you do not do the thing that you wish to do but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. That's that no condemnation. You are not under the law. Now the word, uh, now the works of the flesh are evident. It's evident. These are the evidence uh, that we have. This is the evidence that we have that well, we got to be honest with ourselves. When we look at this checklist and be like, yep, yeah, mm -hmm, I did that today. So that shows that I was walking in the flesh. And hopefully that encourages us to say, man, I got to I got to step it up. I can't just be sitting up here saying that, you know, I'm a believer and that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. But I'm easily giving in to these things without any struggle, no fight. I'm not fighting a good fight. That I'm not even I'm not even casting out these things that I see that are evident. And that is evidence to me that I'm not living, I'm not walking in the spirit, that I'm walking in the flesh by the things that I'm doing. So it says the flesh, here, here are the things that are evident. It says adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousy, outburst of wrath, selfish ambition. Dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, reveries, and the likes of. Which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Practice. Remember, I'm going to give you the illustration again about me playing football and how it was evident to me, that I bought into the coach, my head coach, and his game plan, that we were already victorious because you saw how I lived and played. And because I lived and played in such a way, it was evident that I practiced. I practiced. Leading up to the moment of the game day, I practiced. And here it talks about those that practice these things, that they will not inherit the kingdom of God. So what are the things that we are practicing? Are we practicing 
living in the flesh? Or are we practicing living in the spirit? You know, I'm going to keep using sports analogies for you. Hopefully speaking this, this earthly language will, will, will catch and resonate to a spiritual understanding. You know, sometimes in practice, you know, we got to run a play like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, twenty 12, 20 times because we're just not clicking. We're not getting it right. But we don't give up because we're not it's not clicking. We're not getting it right. We want to continue to practice and build good habits of not giving up, not giving in, of hopefully looking forward to that breakthrough. That uh, that's how we do it. Uh, that's what I'm supposed to do. Uh, that's what I'm supposed to block. That's where I'm supposed to go. So same thing spiritually, that as we practice these things, that's what I'm supposed to deny. That's what I'm supposed to turn away from. Mm -hmm. I see that. Nah, I can't do that. And now we have trust in the things that we practice. So come game day, we can identify those things and call them out in the name of Jesus. That is the value of practice. Practicing killing the flesh. Practicing living in the spirit. Because this is our work. This is the work that we have to do. And then it goes on and it says this. It says that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's the same kingdom of God we were talking about in John 3 that for those that, uh, for God so loved the world, right? That he gave his only begotten son, that those who believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Where? In the kingdom of God. In his kingdom. Right? But we got to put some, we, we, we got to put some, some things to this so we're not just living on that, that scripture that no, nah, we're gonna we're gonna break this thing down so we can see it, so we can understand it, so we have leverage moving forward and understanding and applying and living the things that we desire and wish to speak as Christians. That they're not just empty words like the empty tombs, but they're words that we are choosing to allow our to be evident to us that we that we're living, that we're practicing, that we're trying these things. Verse 22 says this, but the fruit of the spirit is this. So when we're practicing, here are some things that we should be practicing. This is walking and living in the spirit. This is showing that by the way we live, that we can say that this is this is where there's no condemnation because I'm trying. I, I'm crucifying my flesh daily, and these are the things that I'm working on every single day, right? Even when I get them wrong, I'm gonna confess that I got them wrong, right? I'm gonna continue to dust myself off, get up, and keep working, keep working, keep working, keep working, trying to perfect it, trying to perfect it, trying to perfect it to the best of my ability. And it reads as this. Love. Hmm. The first one. Love. You know that love is extremely important in the eyes of God, as he said that plenty of times in his word. That out of these three, faith, hope, love, love is the greatest. That it is love that covers a multitude of sins. That Love is the evidence, again, that evidence to the world that we are his, right? People will know that we are his by how we love, that when it's the greatest commandment to love God and to love to love God first and to, to love others, our neighbors, as we love us. So love, practicing love, like genuine love, practicing it, starting at home. With your spouse, your kids, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your next door neighbors, starting at home, what it what it means to love and to show love and to live in love. 
the things that we write and we post and that we say to others should be evident that we are living and choosing to, to practice and model love because it is our witness to the world that we are his. That's how the world will identify us as being his because if not, it's murky waters. Like, how you going to say you're a Christian, but look what you post, look at the stuff that you're saying, ain't no love in that. But you want to say that you're a believer? You want to say that you follow Jesus Christ? But look, look how you speak. Look how you act. That's not evidence that you're his. That's evidence that you're choosing to be in the flesh. And if we are his and we are doing those things, right, that's part of that practicing phase. Like, OK, I messed up. Let me confess my mess up. And let me go back and let me practice what it means to what? To show that I'm his. Let me practice loving. The second, joy. Living in, in joy. Joy is something that the world and people do not have the ability to give you. Joy is something that is that, that comes only from the Lord. And people do not have the ability to take that away from you. Happiness, yes. Right? If I gave you some money, you'd be pretty happy that I gave you some money. But if I turn right back around after I gave you that money and say, you know what? I forgot. I need that money so I can pay for something else. I, I forgot. I, I, you know, just as happy as I just made you giving, that, giving you that money, you'd be pretty sad that I took that money right back. So happiness is something that, that people, things, and the world can give you. But joy is something that only comes from the Lord. And this is something that we got to practice. We got to practice receiving his joy. We got to practice speaking and modeling and walking in joy. Peace. Right? Peace. What does it mean to be a, per a peacemaker or a peacekeeper? Right? It's important that, that we model what that is, that we practice this. Right? This, this is the game plan for the week. This is the game plan each day. That we got to continue to practice peace. Long suffering or patience. Lord knows that is one that I jump off sides a lot, especially dealing at home with my kids. And I'm just keeping it a hundred. Because in every day I got a new day and opportunity to work on that. And I'm not going to give up on patience. I'm not definitely not giving up on the kids and my family. Right? Because this is my fight. This is my walk. This is, this is my evidence that I am his. This is my evidence that I'm walking and living in the spirit by me practicing and, and working on these things and not settling for uh, the outcome that, that has presented itself because I fail in that moment. Guess what? The Bible reminds us that all of us fall short. Every last one of us. That there is no perfect person. So let's not pretend and act like we're, we're perfect. Case in point, talking about practice, right? That's what, what the classification for doctors is. It's called a practice. They don't know everything. We hold them to a higher esteem because of what they continue to model and learn and, and continue to be bought in to, to, to try to make things better. But the reality is it's still a practice. It's not going to work 100% of the time. But they're going to keep practicing and working and trying to make sure that they come up with a solution that will be beneficial for as many people as possible. Because it's a practice. They're practicing. They're working. They're trying. And it's important that we don't lose sight of practicing and working and trying these things that God has laid forth for us to do. Kindness. Woo! Yes. Especially in this day and age. During this time and this season. Kindness is kind of with a lot of people. A lot of us have opened up the window and allowed, allowed kindness to just fly out of, out of out of the home, to fly out of us. And it's easy to be rude and mean and hateful. Well, guess what? Those are the evidence that we read earlier about being in the flesh. Those are not the evidences that prove and show that we are walking and living and modeling what it means to be in the spirit. Giving in so easily and, and, and falling for the trap of, of combating back and forth with people instead of being kind. I remember my mom used to always tell me, kill them with kindness. 
And I didn't understand what that meant until my adult life. Like, kill them with kindness. Kill people with kindness. And, and how I received that, it's almost like me holding up a mirror and allowing you to see the ugly that, that, that you're presenting, that, 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 that someone may be giving you. I'm just going to be kind to you. I'm going to let you see and it, this, this reflection of yourself in the mirror of, of what, you, what you're giving off. To be kind. The next one, uh, faithfulness, right? I'm choosing from the from the moment that I wake up, Lord, that I'm, I'm I am to the best of my ability. I'm choosing to be faithful to you. I'm going to do things to show that I am faithful, and it's important that we stay lock and step, and that I continue to cling on to you. That I don't lean to my own understanding. But I acknowledge you in everything that I'm going to experience and do on this day so that you can direct my path. I want to remain faithful to you. And I'm going to confess that, Lord, I want to remain faithful to you. I, want, I choose to be faithful to you in this day. The next one is gentleness. Knowing how to deal with people, being gentle. Right? God has given us a spirit of discernment. And, and, and you know, as a, as a, as a football coach, I know the kids and that, that God has called me to coach, right? And I know that some are more fragile than others, right? So I got to know my players. I got to know the people and discern the people that God has given me and how I speak to them. But I have to make sure that as I give information, as I'm talking over things and I'm choosing to be gentle in speech, because I'm dealing with a delicate soul that is important to God. And I don't want him to miss this because I because I missed the mark in that moment and choose to be rude and disrespectful and choose to be in the flesh in those moments because I run out of patience because they're not getting it. Instead, I'm going to choose to be gentle and speak to them in such a way because I want them to get it. I want you to be successful. I want you to experience the same joy that I have in the Lord. I want you to experience the same success. So I'm going to be gentle with you and I'm going to walk with you all the way through it. And then finally, self-control. Controlling self. See, a lot of times we try to control the situation. God never said control the situation. He said control yourself in that situation. Don't try to control the other person in the situation. Just control your actions and who you are in the situation. And as long as we stay committed to controlling ourselves to the best of our ability, What condemnation can be there for you? People see you trying. God sees you trying. The ultimate one that we live for. Playing for an audience of one. Playing for an audience of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because I want him to see that I'm trying. I'm trying my best to walk and live in the spirit. That I'm trying my best to show him how appreciative I am that, that he came and died for me and my sins. I want to show Father God how appreciative I am that he sent his only begotten on my behalf. And that it's worth me to give my best effort. That it's worth me to practice being the best that I can be. Because he was the best version of himself for me. And the least that I can do is be the best version of myself for him. So I pray that when we think about what it means to, to be born again, that we can look at and parallel what it means to walk in the spirit and choosing to do these things. And let's use God's word as a roadmap for us for success. 
right? I know, you know, the 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 best way for us to be who God called for us to be is to know this and to model this and to be pop committed to doing his word. So I pray that, you know, we would take these these set of scriptures and that we would choose to use these as a roadmap for what it means for, for yourself personally, for me personally, to show that I am walking and living in the spirit and that I am denouncing walking and living in the flesh by the things that I choose to do, which will be evidence to those and most importantly to him that I am in him and that I am of him. So I pray, uh, family, that uh, we would do our very best to show how appreciative to God what he has done on our behalf and that we would choose to be believers not by word but by action amen God bless you family um, we're going to close in prayer again if you guys have prayer requests Please submit them, write them down, man. We love to pray over um, the things that you are, are, are going through and dealing um, with. I pray that this was an encouragement to you or confirmation to you, um, a reminder to you of what is uh, called for us to be, what it means to be born again, for us to be rem to be reminded of what it of, of the decision that we made for us that are believers, for us that that desire to have that opportunity to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, right? That that this is what we what what must be done. And that practically, you know, we're gonna walk with you through this because none of us are so far ahead um, that we can't be reminded of what God has called um, and who He has designed us to be. And that we will start showing this. All right. Let us be again, as God said, that the world would know that we are his by how we love. Let us be that reflection of love in the face of hate. It's so easy to hate. We see that everything that's going on politically, um, socially, um, with with the, the social unrest, um, with racism and all these different things. Let's show let's not just just throw empty words out there. Let us be who God called for us to be. All right. Let us be who God called for us to be. Amen. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I am a son of the most high Jesus Christ. And I choose to live after him. I choose to model and walk in the way that in which we read here. That's what I confess. I don't know about you, but that's what I confess. And that's what I stand on. And this is who I choose to be every single day. For him, for me, and for you. And I pray that you would make that declaration for yourself. Amen. Let's go before the Lord. Father God, I thank you so much uh, for who you are. I thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. Lord God, as, as we read, Lord, that, that you died in our place. That we might have life and have it more abundantly, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for giving your only so that we can have an opportunity to be with you eternally in your kingdom Lord I ask and pray Father God that, that you will forgive us for our sins that we have committed Lord Jesus in this day our sins are omission and commission Lord Jesus may you continue to remind us through your word uh, what you uh, require of us Lord God as your servants as your children as believers, what it means, Father God, to be of witness and service to this world. As you said in the Great Commission, to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe what you have commanded us. You have commanded us to love one another. You have commanded us, Lord God, 
to be of witness and service to others. May we hold fast to your word. May we fight the good fight in living your word. May we not be just voices that speak your word. Empty words without actions to follow. Let us not be Pharisees and Sadducees in this day and age, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, for every hear of your word. We pray for those, Father God, who um, are recovering and have recovered and still going through the coronavirus situation, Lord Jesus. For those families, Lord God, may you be present with them. May they know that you are with them. We pray for those that are going through and still recovering from the fires, Lord God. Uh, may, may they know, Father God, that, that you are with them, Lord Jesus. For those that are recovering from the hurricanes and the storms, Lord God, down south, Lord, may you continue to be with your people, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And all of us here, Lord God, and what we may be going through individually um, in our homes and in our lives, Lord Jesus, may we be reminded that you are with us always to the end. You will never leave us nor forsake us. And that we, that we will be encouraged, Lord God, to do our part, which is living in a way, Father God, that we denounce the flesh and that we submit ourselves to living in the spirit. So again, we thank you, Father. We love you. And it's in your blessed Holy Son, Jesus Christ's name, we pray all these things. Amen. God bless you, family. Um, till we uh, see each other again, uh, may the Lord be with you and yours. And um, I love you and um, look forward to uh, seeing you soon. God bless you.